Uh, while Chris Christie may believe that Donald Trump and his acolytes are done, our next guest believes otherwise. Uh, in a new piece entitled Republicans 2024 Magical Thinking, staff writer at The Atlantic, McKay Coppins argues that many in the party are ready to drop Trump, but they don't know the most effective way to do so. And McKay joins us now along for this conversation is also the publisher of The Bulwark, Sarah Longwell. Good to have you both with us. So, McKay, you write in the piece this, press them hard enough and most Republican officials, even the ones with mega hats in their closets and Mar-a-Lago selfies in their Twitter avatar, will privately admit that Donald Trump has become a problem. He's presided over three abysmal election cycles since he took office. He is more on stable than ever, and yet he returned to the campaign trail this past weekend, declaring that he's angry and determined to win the GOP presidential nomination again in 2024. Aside from his most blinkered loyalists, virtually everyone in the party agrees it's time to move on from Trump. But ask them how they plan to do that, and the discussion quickly veers into the realm of hopeful hypotheticals. Maybe he'll get indicted and his legal problems will overwhelm him. Maybe he'll flame out in the early primaries or just get bored with politics and wander away. Maybe the situation will resolve itself naturally. He's old after all. How many years can he have left? Jeez. Faced with the prospect of another election cycle dominated by Trump and uncertain that he can actually be beaten in the primaries, many Republicans are quietly rooting for something to happen that will make him go away and they would strongly prefer not to make it happen themselves. Well, you've just summed up the weakness of the Republican Party and why his followers, McKay, do stupid, cruel, sick things like trend on Twitter, um, pushing conspiracy theories about Paul Pelosi in the hours after his attack. I mean, this is the fish rotting from the head, um, and it continues, and they're too weak to do anything about it. So... So what then? Yeah, there's this learned kind of cowardice and cravenness inside the Republican yeah. Party that goes back to 2016, right? This is a, a repeat of the dynamic of his early rise to power, which is all the party elites, most of the elected officials, current and former, don't want him to be the nominee. They want him to go away. But they're so afraid of a backlash from his supporters that nobody wants to jump first. And so what we have instead is kind of this engaging and magical thinking these delusions, this wishful, uh, you know, fantasy that something will happen. Deus ex machina will take care of it for us so that we don't have to actually go out there and beat him. So, uh, and Sarah Longwell, you're looking at polling that reflects some of this. Um, tell us what you found. What are the key takeaways? Yeah, so we just released a new poll that showed how much Donald Trump is really fading within the Republican Party in a head-to-head -head matchup with Ron DeSantis uh, on three different ballots, head-to-head -head, uh, with another candidate thrown in or in a 10-way ballot. Uh, Ron DeSantis was beating Trump in all of those, but... But the problem is, and this goes to McKay's point, the problem is, is that Donald Trump in all of these ballot tests is still holding on to about 28 to 30 percent of Republicans. And so even though the majority of the party wants to move on and like somebody else like Ron DeSantis, Donald Trump has this locked in base that is going nowhere, that thinks Donald Trump is the only one who can sort of, you know, tell it like it is. I mean, they have this whole mythology uh, built up around Donald Trump and it, they are so locked in. And this is the question I really wanted to understand in the poll was if Donald Trump runs as an independent would you follow him? And 28% of, of the people who are sort of always Trump said they would follow him on an independent uh, presidential campaign. And this is where he has a ton of leverage against Republicans. They don't know what to do about the fact that he can walk away with a huge number of their voters. And so even though there's this big chunk of the party that thinks, man, we got to move on from Trump, he's not electable, he can't win, uh, there's this locked in percent that basically keeps the party from moving on from Trump.
Uh, McKay, uh, is there was there any sense in your interviews with Republicans, Republican elites, that they understand that they're engaged in this magical thinking, that they understand that they're just sort of wishing and hoping uh, rather than doing anything, or or <laughs> are they just lost in the fog? You know, I, I talked to former Senator Rob Portman, who's kind of a classic, you know, uh, establishment Republican. And he told me uh, when I asked him about the Trump problem, uh, you know, well, I, I think he's eventually going to, to step away. He'll realize that uh, there are other Republicans better suited to win the, re win the election. And so I, I think he'll just bow out graciously and become a senior statesman in the party, talk about Republican policies. And while he he was kind of giving me this whole spiel, I actually kind of involuntarily laughed because it's so contrary to everything we know about Donald Trump. And in that moment, the, the facade dropped and he said, uh, you know, maybe that's wishful thinking on my part. So I do think some Republicans realize they're engaging in wishful thinking, but they also aren't willing to take the next step and do something about it. There's no question, Sarah, there's wish casting. We've talked a lot in the last couple of weeks about Paul Ryan saying Donald Trump is a proven loser. I don't think he could win enough. Nomination. Of course, he could win a nomination. That might be wishful thinking there as well. But is there an acceptable alternative beside Ron DeSantis at this point? Ron DeSantis strikes a lot of people as an idea. OK, he could be good instead of Donald Trump. He has some of the parts of Trump that I like, but not the bad stuff, um, some of the bad stuff. Um, what, what, are they, what are voters looking for if it's not Donald Trump? Well, this is what's interesting about why they like Ron DeSantis. They talk about Ron DeSantis in relation to Trump. They right. say Ron DeSantis is Trump without the baggage. He's Trump not on steroids. And I always find this fascinating because Trump is still the center of these voters' political worldview. And so they're just looking for somebody who sort of gives them all the Trumpy stuff that they love, uh, but that they see as more electable, somebody who could actually peel off swing voters. Um, but look, it's still very early. It is true um, that, that Ron DeSantis just may not fulfill everybody's hopes and dreams that they're imposing on him, that some other candidate could potentially emerge and capture people's imaginations. I guess part of my fear, though, in looking at this polling and this locked in sort of 28, 30 percent is that if Ron DeSantis gets on a big stage and people are like, you know, he's not as good as I thought he was going to be. And actually, we've got uh, the OG here, Donald Trump, as an option that they just sort of go back to what they know um, because they still want this fighter. You know, they're not that interested in sort of the old school pragmatic uh, Republicans, uh, you know, for, for people who might use Ronald Reagan as their uh, avatar and what they aspire to, voters are not interested in that. They want somebody who's going to beat up on their enemies, be a big fighter, be a strong man. And so right now, that's why both Donald Trump and Ron DeSantis are the leaders in their imaginations. McKay, kind of game it out for us. I mean, we saw in the Arizona race that you had some Republicans who voted Republican across the ticket not vote for Carrie Lake for the governor's race. I think it was something like 30,000. And so you had kind of Republicans who were prepared to vote for a Democrat in order not to get somebody too extreme into the governor's office. Do you think over the course of the last eight years, there have been a number of Republicans who have become so disenchanted with um, Trump, as you're reporting, but to the degree that they would be prepared to vote for a Democrat in order to get rid of him. I mean, how, how does it game out for you? Yeah, I think there's no question there's been a realignment over the last seven or eight years. I think polling holds that up, that a certain number of Republican voters has just become disenchanted with the party, moved away, become independent. Some have voted for Joe Biden in the last election. I think that the longer Donald Trump has a hold on this party, the, the more solidified that realignment will become. I think a lot of the Republican elites that I talk to hope that if Trump disappears somehow, that they could return to winning back some of those suburban, college-educated Mitt Romney, John McCain voters that they used to, to be so strong with. Um, again, it, it's just a matter of beating Donald Trump, and I think that's the key takeaway, right? Donald Trump isn't going to magically disappear. The Republican Party, and probably one Republican in particular, whether that's Ron DeSantis or somebody else, has to step up and confront him directly and beat him. This problem isn't going to mm -hmm. solve itself for the party. 
All right, staff writer at The Atlantic, McKay Coppins, thank you. His new piece for the magazine is online now. Publisher of The Bulwark, Sarah Longwell, as always, it's great to have you on the show. Thanks very much.